Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the new Bloomboro meta. Today we're taking a look at a mono black mill deck. You've heard that right. We're going to try to mill the opponent out thanks to Scavenger's talent. This was voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the initial build of this deck was also brought to me by one of my Patreon supporters. Scavenger's talent is just one mana, says whenever one or more creatures you control die, create a food token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Can get it to level 2 for 2 additional mana, saying whenever we sacrifice a person permanent, doesn't have to be a creature, target player mills two cards, and that's the ability we're going to use to eventually mill the opponent out. Occasionally we might get this to level 3 to start recurring creatures out of our graveyard, but that's only really part of our game plan if we want to get back a Rotten Mouth Viper, which is kind of plan B in this deck, as we do generate lots of cheap permanents we can sacrifice to get the Viper in play ahead of schedule, and then as the uh, Blight counters might add up to take out the opponent, especially good against decks that don't have removal for a 6 6 creature, thinking of Mono Red Aggro for instance. But this is definitely plan B. Plan A is to sacrifice a bunch of our permanents to a Pitless Carnage, saying we can sacrifice any number of permanents we control and then draw that many cards. We actually don't care about the card draw too much, we more care about being able to sacrifice all our stuff, including our lands, because for each land and other permanent we sacrifice, we'll get to mill the opponent for two for every level 2 scavenger's talent we have on the battlefield. So imagine we have two level 2 scavenger's talents on the battlefield and around 10 permanents we can sacrifice, then now we get to mill the opponent for 40 in one go by uh, casting our Pitiless Carnage. And you can imagine if we have a couple more permanents or if it's pretty late into the game and the opponent has drawn a few cards of their own, this can be enough to just win the game on the spot. And then of course the more permanents we have the better. If we have a third scavenger's talent on level 2 we could mill them for 60 on the spot so you can see where that is going. Now of course we do need a little bit of setup to get double scavenger's talent on the battlefield, but we have a lot of tutor effects to help us out, including four copies of a Diabolic Intent. As an additional cost we need to sack a creature to search up anything and put it in our hand. So we've got the Greedy Freebooter alongside Nezumi Link Breaker as expendable one drops that we don't mind sacrificing. Link Breaker leaves behind another 1-1 one -one creature we can sacrifice, whereas Freebooter makes a treasure and also lets us scry one, so that's a bit more card selection. And and then we're also playing four copies of Case of the Stash Skeleton, which makes a 2-1 skeleton token that becomes a suspect, so it will have menace and cannot block. So this card making two permanents is great for setting up our Rotten Mouth Viper already. And then we actively want to sacrifice the skeleton token, because if we do and don't control any other suspected skeletons, we get to solve the case and then turn this into an enchantment that can be sacrificed for two mana to search up any card in our deck and put it in our hand. So yet another tutor effect alongside our Diabolic Intent and the skeleton we can easily sacrifice to a Diabolic Intent, or maybe a Fanatical Offering, which lets us sacrifice a creature or artifact to draw to and make a map token, so that can maybe set up a second Fanatical Offering, or still leaves behind an extra permanent we can sacrifice to set up a lethal Pitiless Carnage, or to maybe cast a Rotten Mouth Viper, so those are all very useful. And then the Witch's Vanity gives us another removal spell that leaves behind lots of permanents for us to sacrifice, first making a food token on chapter 2, and then eventually also a Wicked Roll token, which also counts as something we can maybe sacrifice to a Rotten Mouth Viper. So plenty of things we can sacrifice, and then we're just building towards enough mana and enough permanents in play to set up that lethal Pitiless Carnage. In the meantime we have additional removal as well with Cut Down and Go for the Throat, especially useful against the red aggro decks that try to pump up a creature to make it lethal. And then a four copies of Fountain Port in the mana base, also very useful as another way to maybe sacrifice a token to draw a card, so that can be another way for us to solve our case of the stash skeleton if the opponent doesn't cooperate or if we don't find another sacrifice outlet, and can also make additional tokens with it to maybe increase our permanent count to uh, set up that lethal pitiless carnage. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, we have a reasonable hand. Can start with our Nezumi Link Breaker. Turn to either Stash Skeleton or can immediately Offering. Opponent's gonna make us exile a card from our hand. Maybe it is just a swamp. Although if our opponent's playing a discard deck, which is Vanity may not be at its best. If they play a bat, they just take the Vanity. And if they don't have one, then they may not have a ton of other targets. Alright, Carnage could come in handy. I will play my second black source while we can, and then let's get the case online. Ok, 
can also use Fountain Port to sacrifice a skeleton to let us tutor. Now, I think I like plotting Carnage. Although going Freebooter into Offering is not bad either. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Opponent may have removal. And they're considering whether they want to take out the skeleton or not. Another negotiation, so in response we can Offering. And then the question is, do we sacrifice our skeleton so we can eventually sack our case? Or do we sack the Freebooter? I think for now Freebooter makes sense, since the skeleton is applying a bit of pressure. And then don't need to keep Swamp on top. Okay, another Vanity can go. And a Bronco is next. Okay, found a go for the throat to answer it if we want to. Which sounds reasonable. For now, Skeleton could keep attacking. If I go for the throat Bronco, I can still sack the map token. Although, we could also just keep it available as something to sacrifice to a Pitiless Carnage. So, close call. Could also just plot the Carnage and then uh, not even play Freebooter. Because if something like a shield root shows up, that might be more important for me to go for the throat. As opposed to the Bronco. Playing Freebooter to try and double block was also an option. So we still need to find our talent. Which is maybe what I'll get with the case. Opponent deploying a Preacher now. Okay. So they're kind of turtling up here, playing defense. And could also go for the throat to Preacher. Or I could sack the Skeleton to Fountain Port to draw a card to solve the case. That's also an option. Or attack, see if they want to double block and trade for the Bronco. So we have some options. Either way, it makes sense to attack first. Since I can do this at instant speed. Okay, and then... Yeah, I don't think I want to Carnage... Just sacking some random stuff, although it is an option. Just play Freebooter, Carnage, sacking one, two, three, four, five things. May not be a terrible idea, although I'll need to use the second Carnage to eventually combo off. I think I'll uh, sack to draw. Find Swamp. And then just play the Freebooter, keep go for the throat to answer Preacher later. Right now it's not really bothering me. And then next turn I can sack the case and start leveling up our talent. Take two. And there's Shieldred, so that we can go for the throat now. Surprised they didn't saddle the Bronco, but I guess they wanted to keep more blockers available. So sank the case. And get our talent. And play it. Now I still probably need a second copy that we need to level up to set up a lethal carnage to melt the opponent out. And then if another shielder shows up in the meantime, we could be in trouble. But they are giving us enough time to set up at least. We're not under a ton of pressure. And for now, level up. Play Freebooter and can pass with Fountain Port available. Since there's nothing I need to reanimate here. So yeah, right now our opponent's got 46 cards in library. And then start milling the opponents.
opponent does have the shieldred, sadly. So that does limit how much we can sack to a carnage. So for now, let's see here. I guess a uh, treasure token can go. Miller opponents. So yeah, no answer to Shieldred means we cannot Carnage for lethal. So, can sack a food to gain some life. I can um, sack something to Fountain Port to maybe draw another Go for the Throats, but those odds aren't super high. Could also find a Tutor to answer Shieldred. So maybe start there. Could also maybe sack a map to go exploring. It's also not unreasonable. Alright, found another talent, so now we have everything we need, except for we need to get rid of shieldreds. Because if I cast Carnage now, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, times 4 basically is 48, so we mill our opponent out. But we would also draw cards in the process, and Shieldred kills us. So I need to first find a solution to Shieldred. At least we can chum block in the meantime and mill them for a bit. I may have to cast a smaller Carnage to look for answers. Opponent attacks all out. A line breaker down. Now the Talents ability only triggers once each turn, so it benefits the opponent to take out multiple creatures at once. And Diabolic Intent could potentially do it, assuming I have a creature left to sacrifice, which right now we're taking 8, 9, plus 2 more from Shielders, so I'm forced to chump. Although I guess we'll get another token here on the way. So I think I keep it. And then I have to block just so I don't die to Shieldreds. Can always make another token with Fountain Port as well. I don't have anything in hand they can make me discard. So we're at three. Cast Diabolic Intent, sacking my Mercenary. Mill the opponent for a bit. Get some food that can gain us life as well. And then just need to get an answer to Shieldreds. Go for the throat will do. Hope this works. And then Pitless Carnage for the win. Opponent has 35 cards remaining. So don't even have to sacrifice everything, but it's kind of fun to do so. Just need to make sure I don't deck myself, but that shouldn't be a problem. And there we go, Scavenger's Talents, Mono Black Mill. Took a little bit of setup, but our opponent being a little bit passive worked in our favor. Now, for what it's worth, we can also sacrifice the Scavenger's Talent itself to our Pitiless Carnage, and that will mill the opponent for a little bit more. But in this case, it's not going to be necessary. Don't think they have a way to deal 3 damage in their upkeep before they need to take a draw step from an empty library. And our opponent explodes! Awesome! On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. A Link Breaker can be sacrificed to Fanatical Offering, double vanity for a red aggro. So first couple turns we just need to play defense, take out the challenger, cutdown's good too. So next turn we could maybe remove two creatures, and uh, yeah I think I may as well attack since I'm not trumping just yet. Another Swiss spear, 
This might be a matchup for the uh, Viper, which can come down and stabilize the board for us. The Monstrous Rage represents quite a bit of damage. We do get a food token at least. And then play another Vanity. Keep up cut down. Opponent with a felonious rage in response. So they'll just get a token out of it basically. A 2-2 two -two detective. So if I cut down in response, our opponent does not get a detective, still loses Swiss Spear. Or I can keep cut down for the other Swiss Spear, but now that they're down to one card in hand, the 2-2 two -two is probably better than a 1-2 prowess, I have to imagine. So this seems fine. And then I'll maybe trump the Swiss Spear if they grow it some more. Otherwise I'll just take one. Opponent looking at maybe a pump spell once again. Yeah, if we can get the trample tricks out of the way, I can maybe chump and then sacrifice the offering to soak up an attack. We also get a wicked roll, so now a 2-2 link breaker. Alright, so don't hate my spot. We're pretty far from setting up any combo, however, but uh, getting the Viper might be the way to go. So I could go Link Breaker, sack to Diabolic Intents, get Viper, or I can pass with Fanatical Offering available alongside maybe some food tokens in case they try to burn me out, which is a little safer. And then next turn we should still be able to intent for a Viper. Swiss Spear attacks. By blocking with one Link Breaker, we force them to play a Pump Spell. If that Pump Spell is Monstrous Rage, I'll be pretty sad, because then I can't sack to Offering without taking lethal Trample damage. So hopefully that's the case here. Blazing Crescendo, that's fine. So we'll see what they reveal. Slick Shots, which they cannot cast, and then now we can Fanatical Offering. And hopefully their last card's not a Monstrous Rage, otherwise we die. Found a Carnage and Talent, so all of a sudden we might be on the Carnage combo plan. But we also need to respect the Slick Shots, cut down an excellent answer. So let's see here. Grow Link Breaker, I think. Could cut down Slick Shot now to prevent any awkwardness. And then Talent level up, or Talent keep up Food Token is a little safer. But I also want to get this uh, combo set up as soon as possible. Pass a turn. And then next turn I could Diabolic Intent for another Talent. And then we're not too far from a Lethal Carnage. I need to keep the extra token in play to have more things to sacrifice. Opponent found another Felonious Rage. So they don't get a token. That's fine. And we get another food, so the life gain from the foods could also keep us alive. So, uh, I guess we'll attack for one. Sack to Diabolic Intents. Honestly, I could still go for the Viper. Since I can play it for very cheap, and at 5 life we're safe. Or I can get another Talents, and then keep up Go for the Throat this turn cycle. Next turn, play level up. And turn after Carnage should be lethal with all these extra tokens. Yeah, I guess we'll go for the mill plan, since it's a bit more satisfying. But, uh, could totally go for Viper as well. So Swiss Peer attacks, no blocks. See if they go for lethal. And then I should probably go for the throats. Perfect. And then now play Talents. I'll level up. Keep a food token available just in case. And we can start doing the math here. We have 5, 6, plus 5 is 11 things to sacrifice. Times 4 is 44 cards, so we could mill the opponent out next turn. 
and uh, playing the case first doesn't quite work since I wouldn't have the mana to cast Carnage. But yeah, we can just go for it. There's not much our opponent can do to stop us. And maybe could have showcased the interaction where you do still sacrifice your own scavenger's talent. It does not prevent the talent from triggering, since it kind of sees you sacrificing the talent itself and all your other permanents. So feel free to sacrifice the talent itself. But uh, if it's not needed, I like keeping it in play. But yeah, that should do it, unless they have five points of burn in hand, which I guess I didn't think about. If they go shock plus lightning strike here, I'll uh, be pretty sad to have sacrificed those food tokens. But let's see, did we successfully mill out mono reds with our mono black deck? 24, mill two each, should be just enough. Opponent clearly on the uh, cell sword version of mono red with lots of pump spells. So they might have a cell sword stuck in hand, that's not doing anything for them. And this version typically doesn't play Lightning Strike. Okay, pass a turn. Opponent draws from an empty library. And that should be game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we've got what looks like a Keeper. Bit of removal. In case we can sank the Skeleton to Diabolic Intent to set up our combo. Facing black-white bats, so easy cut down on the bat. Opponent still has a look at our hand, which can maybe help inform some of their future decisions. For us, it's a straightforward case of the stash skeleton. Freebooter is something else we can sacrifice, so our hand is shaping up nicely. Just need to find our scavenger's talent and hope they don't have enchantment removal. Now we're not going to be able to necessarily outrace the bat deck with all the flying creatures. So we do need to try and assemble a combo as soon as possible. No play from the opponent is promising. So you can attack. And then... Not opposed to Freebooter pass with Fanatical Offering available. And then a response to cut down we can Offering. So that also solves our case. Found a Viper. Don't think Viper's gonna go the distance in this matchup. Can expect them to have removal for it, but it might be a good distraction to keep the opponent busy. If a Shield Road shows up, we'll need to take care of that as well. And a Link Breaker is good to sack to the Diabolic Intent, which our opponent knows about, maybe trying to keep us off creatures. So what's our sequencing here? I don't think I go all out on the Viper. Uh, sacking the case to get Scavenger's Talent is reasonable. Play it alongside a Link Breaker. Kind of want to plot the Carnage to keep it safe in exile as well. So could do that and play a Link Breaker. And then it's unlikely for them to deal with both the 1-1 one -one and the 1-1 one -one Mercenary. So I'll still be able to cast the Intent next turn. So we'll pass a turn. And a draft. So their opponent might be on their own Rotten Mouth Viper, perhaps. Virtue takes care of Linebreaker. And we found a talent that helps. So... Play talent. Level up, cast Diabolic Intent could be the line. May as well attack first. Or do we try and get a Viper on the battlefield? I don't think I'm in a hurry to do so, but it is an option. Play it, sacking some random tokens, but we're pretty close to just winning with a talent mill. So I think that's reasonable here. Could also level up first, as opposed to deploying the second talent, but having it on the battlefield is safer in case our opponent plays another deep cavern bat. So I just play talents. And then we just need to level those up. We already have Carnage in Exile. 
So, yeah, don't think I need to do anything else. Could use a treasure to level up, but an extra permanent to sacrifice might be more useful. Opponent does indeed have their own Viper, makes sense. But for now we can just take some damage. Take our turn. And go for the throat, also a nice answer. So let's do some math. Opponent's got 46 cards in library. If I sacrifice everything, including the two scavengers' talents, then I would be sacrificing 11 permanents. 11 times 4 is 44, so we're still a little bit short of winning the game on the spot. All right, so we do need to wait a little bit longer. For now, we can go for the throat. I can sack the case to get another talent or just start leveling this up. And pass a turn. Yeah, we just need more permanence on the battlefield, basically. Opponent's casting Virtue to reanimate the Viper. That buys us a bit more time. And then now I could cast my own Viper as well. But I can now sack the case, get a third Scavenger's Talent. And then next turn we should certainly get there. Probably could have leveled up once again. But milling the opponent right now could also be risky, since they have a virtue to reanimate stuff. Alright, so level up. Yeah, I guess we do have a treasure token, so I could have leveled up all three talents to level two, and then just won the game on the spot. But I also don't mind giving the opponent one more turn here to see what they can come up with. But then next turn we should easily get there with over uh, 60 cards milled. Potent hard casting another virtue of persistence. But we should be able to just combo kill here. So we'll level up again. And these are now all level 2. We can float some mana. And Carnage. Making sure we don't deck ourselves, but that's not a concern. There we go. So mill the opponent for 60. Should do the trick. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A Link Breaker. And something we can sacrifice to maybe a Viper. Which is Vanity as removal. So especially against the red deck, this hand's pretty good. And turn one Swiss Spear, we don't mind seeing. Could still wait to use Vanity on a more impactful creature. And for now play the case. But the sooner we get Vanity going, the sooner I'll have those permanents for Viper. Which is a good card to get on the battlefield against the red deck especially. As they're unlikely to have clean answers to a 6-6. And then we still have go for the throat for larger creatures. Hardfire hero immediately picks up a plus one counter from Valiant. And a scavenger's talent to draw. Alright, so we could already play the Viper here. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. We'll have a leftover 1-1 one -one token. And this can start clocking the opponents. And then if they do somehow answer the Viper, maybe a level 3 Scavenger's Talents can eventually get it back. So even outside of the combo kill, it still has a use on level 3 in this deck. If the hero attacks, we still have to be a little bit careful about blocking, since just a Monstrous Rage would be enough to trade. So I might want to wait to block until I have Gopher Throat available, or just take the damage and hope we don't die. Opponent exiling a slick shot, which at least they won't be able to play this turn. But if I take six and our opponent has the uh, burn together adventure, they could deal another 12 damage, so that would put me to one. So I probably have to at least consider jumping with a mercenary, and then we'll uh, have to wait and see. Jumping with a mercenary feels bad if they have a monstrous rage, but at least we don't die on the spots. And then next turn we'll have go for the throw to interact. Can also respond to burn together with go for the throat which is a bit different from fling which sacrifices as an additional cost those look like they have the monstrous rage however so yeah they still trample for eight 
So Viper attacks with two counters, so the damage does add up there as well. And then I'm not sure if go further throw it's enough to keep us alive, since they also get to maybe play a slick shot. Put on this card a Swiss spear. And they are at nine. So just need to survive this one turn pretty much. Slick shots attack. Go for the throw at hero means I still take four. So I should be able to survive a burn together. And a demonic ruckus we can respond to. Alright, so Yeah, I think our opponent's pretty dead now to the Viper attacking. Although they still got us down to four, so can never be too safe against moderate aggro. Our opponent's doing the math to see if they can survive by keeping the slick shot back. So we can play some more stuff out. I guess never mind, we'll get a third counter on the Viper here. So even if they jump, they still take 12 since they don't have any other non-land permanents to sacrifice. So yeah, that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got what looks like a Keeper. Might be the case where we just cast Carnage, sacking some random creatures, as opposed to waiting to set up the combo kill, because right now I don't have another Sacrifice outlet. Facing Red-White might be the new Red-White Tokens deck, which does play Temporary Lockdown, and that's a difficult card for us to beat. So get in for one. Vanity only takes out opposing creatures. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, play Talent, or I can just play another Freebooter. Either way, Lockdown's gonna hurt a lot. Let's go with the Talent. Our eventual goal is to probably mill the opponent out, since I don't think Viper is likely to get there. But uh, yeah, we need to have two leveled up talents, plus enough permanents to sacrifice in the first place. Which is tricky when we can expect the opponent to have a lockdown. Alright, Virtue making a 2-2 Knight. At least lets us uh, scry here. And now we can Vanity the token. Keep Swamp. So yeah, maybe they're not on a temporary lockdown build, which would be good for us. And next turn I could plot Pitiless Carnage. And then in theory a second Scavenger's Talent could be enough to set up a lethal mill, assuming we have enough permanence to sacrifice in the first place. The upside of playing a creature here is that we get a Wicked Roll next turn. Don't think that's super relevant prefer plotting Carnage, and then we'll wait and see what our opponent does. Yeah, they do have Lockdown, so that's gonna be difficult to beat, as I've said. But at least we got rid of one of them, so maybe we still have the chance to rebuild with Freebooter, Case of the Stash Skeleton. At least the Forge gives us a way to block with a freebooter if we really want to, to scry. Don't think I'm casting the carnage, although we could consider it if we don't think we'll be able to assemble double scavenger's talent. A Mondrak to double tokens, that's quite scary, so that applies a ton of pressure all of a sudden. So yeah, I guess we'll uh, take six, and then carnage needs to try and find some answers. Vanity doesn't quite do it. So I can attack with a Skeleton. I can play double Link Breaker to sacrifice those as well. And then just kind of a setup Pitiless Carnage instead of a winning play. And we'll get some tokens. Probably don't need Swamp anymore. And then I could still play the Viper if I sank the case as well. Is that worth it? I mean, next turn we're kind of just dying, so I may as well do something. But uh, I assume our opponent will have an answer to a 6-6. And if not, they can just kill us in two turns with the Orbrask Forge and Mondrak. 
Otherwise, Case could have tried to get a go for the throat to take out Mondrak, assuming they don't make it indestructible. But yeah, the main problem is just lockdown being a way for them to reset all the work we've done with Scavenger's Talent and get lost another answer to enchantments. So yeah, this seems like a tough matchup that we're unlikely to win. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're mono-black control, basically. Could work out against hyper-aggro. I guess we'll try it. But we're not really setting up our own game plan as we draw another cutdown. At least we're up against a mono-red, it seems. So this is a good matchup to draw these removal spells, as our opponent plots a slick shot. Yeah, slick shot is a type of card that can still kill out of nowhere if they can combine it with one of their fling effects from uh, the Burn Together adventure, but opponent's gonna commit. So the problem with Cutdown is if they have a pump spell, they can grow their creature in response, so the safest would be to go for the throats, and long-term Slick Shots I think is still the scarier card. So I can go for the throats Slick Shot now, opponent may pump the Challenger, could also let damage happen, but uh... Now let's go for the throat, see what happens. And opponent does have the Monstrous Rage on Challenger. I guess on the flip side, Monstrous Rage on Challenger means I cannot cut it down anymore, whereas Monstrous Rage on Slick Shot would make it a 2-3, still within range of cut down. So maybe there was a reason to switch it around. And then... Pass, maybe should have kept up double cut down, but we're most likely gonna go for the throw challenger. They can now still potentially enable Valiant, but that might also waste some of their resources. Right, Hardfire Hero. They could also give haste with the uh, Rock Face Village. Opponent's got another challenger instead. And then we'll go for the throw to bigger one. That seems to work. Take two. And then double cut down can still clean up the board. Could be okay to level this up once, although milling the opponent now doesn't really matter. So we'll pass. And then in response we can cut down. So they didn't get to use the village on challenger to trigger Valiant perhaps with a rabbit non-response and we can cut down again so yeah got to use every single removal spell and got to punish the opponent for using their bite spell here the rabbit gnaw okay which is vanity is a good removal spell to have left so pitiless carnage since we already have a scavenger's talent, I think we're setting up the combo kill to mill the opponent out. So instead of casting it just to draw one or two cards, we can uh, try to plot it. Now do I attack for one? If our opponent finds a haste creature, it can likely attack past my 1-1 one -one anyway, so... And our opponent explodes, they must have drawn a land, and they don't feel like playing against mono-black control, even if that's not really what we're up to. Alright, so we got to see our mono-black sacrifice deck in action, and it's a lot of fun to play, although maybe not the most competitive deck out there. The win rate's probably going to be around 50%, maybe even below it, so it's not really going to help you rank up. Now, that being said, we do have a decent game plan against the mono-red aggro decks in the format, since we have plenty of removal, and then an early viper can take over, or we can play more controlling games game where we eventually mill the opponent out, kind of depends how our draw shapes up. But against some more controlling decks and the format that are often now packing temporary lockdown, they're gonna have plenty of ways to exile all our stuff, including our enchantments, and make it very difficult to ever combo off, since they're also gonna have more answers to the Viper, or maybe even counter spells to the Pitiless Carnage, so then we're never gonna be able to assemble our combo. So the deck definitely has some glaring weaknesses that could potentially be solved in best of three by adding some discard spells into the mix, but in the best of one meta I would not uh, necessarily recommend it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.